and I'm pleased to be able to present to you a demonstration of the 2014.2 improvements in integrating your geological and geophysical interpretations within a robust and performant geomodeling environment. The agenda today will cover the integrated workflow and geomodeling. Geographics 2014.2 brings an impressive list of significant enhancements to integrating geological and geophysical interpretations, including but not limited to new velocity modeling and size vision that automatically ties your formation picks to their corresponding seismic horizons through a sophisticated 3D velocity model. The new multi-attribute seismic inversion capability, improved integration between your geophysical and geological interpretations through the advanced velocity modeling, integrated seismic horizons and faults into geomodel constraints, and dynamic depth converted seismic backdrops into smart section cross sections. Lastly, I'll wrap up by answering any of your questions and direct you to additional resources to further advance your understanding of the geographics offering. I will be demonstrating using a data set from the Bakken Formation and the Madison Group in Saskatchewan, Canada. We will examine the current distribution of production in relationship to the initial structural interpretation. I will then create a petrophysical model in PRISM of the producing zone and map the reservoir parameters over the area. Then in size vision, I will model the velocity and convert the key surfaces to depth. Next, I will display a V-shale or shale volume seismic inversion section created with our new multi-attribute seismic inversion application called PREDICT3D to model the distribution of the reservoir away from the well control. I will then apply this inversion to the GEO model in a depth converted seismic backdrop along with the depth converted surfaces within smart second GEO model to identify new low risk locations and then view those in our new 3D advanced interpretation environment. From that we can then see where we can pick new locations to expand the field and its production. With that we'll change over to the demonstration. Before you in the smart section map view is a structural map on top of the detrital unconformity at the top of the Madison group. You'll notice the production is along the crest of an easterly plunging anticline. Notice there appears to be no structural closure to the west. Therefore, there must be something additional to structural closure to account for the production. I have a cross-section across the crest of the feature, which shows the sand packages within the Madison Group and the Bakken Sand in Saskatchewan. Notice the thick buildup of sand in the middle wells and the thinning and also the less reservoir quality of the sand off to the sides or on the, of the crest of the structure. Let's look at this well in PRISM. PRISM is a multi-well petrophysical analysis application. I'm showing a petrophysical model where I'm looking at calculating shale volumes and also pay and sand flags indicating the presence of good porosity, low water saturation, and low V shale. I'm taking these parameters and extracting them and mapping them and, and displaying them over the map area to see if this explains some of the production. So I'll turn off the color on the detrital surface and turn on the map of the petrophysical parameters. The cooler colors indicate good reservoir quality. Notice that's draped right over the crest of the structure in a northeast to southwest direction. To the west or up dip, it looks like the reservoir quality is poorer. So this may be accounting for the fact that there's only production in this area. Now let's take a look at the sequence stratigraphic interpretation over the area. The red surface here is the detrital unconformity. 
Notice that there is also some structural and stratigraphic risk of losing sand due to this unconformity cutting it out. Therefore, the conventional interpretation would indicate that this field is probably extended as far as it can and there is no further life to it. However, fortunately, we do have 3D seismic over the area. We'll be looking at that in size vision, our 2D, 3D seismic interpretation package. This seismic section is the same line of section as the cross section we were looking at in smart section. I've tied the geology to the geophysics with these synthetics that I generated in log M, showing the green event as the top of the tridal, that's the unconformity, the Madison group sands, and the Bakken sands down here at the bottom. The yellow curves are the V-shale curves that I calculated in PRISM. The low V-shale values, by inference, indicate thick sand. Notice the sand thickness here, 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 and in the fourth well, but also the thinning of the sand to the right. <clears throat> I've used our new dynamic depth conversion velocity modeling tool to create a velocity model tying the time horizons for the four main events to their formation depth value, creating time depth pairs or velocity control points, and using that to create a very robust 3D velocity model over the area. Then generated a velocity field over the detrital surface, and then quickly converting that to depth. It looks to be that there may be some closure to the west. It's something to keep in mind going forward. But we also talked about that there is some stratigraphic and secret stratigraphic risk of poor reservoir sand, as indicated by this thin V-shale curve here, and also losing the sand beneath that unconformity. However, the amplitude seismic we're looking at does not show any particular character indicating the loss of good sand quality. We have a new product called PREDICT3D. PREDICT3D is a multi-attribute inversion algorithm that takes input from the curves, in this case the V-shale curves, the velocity model, so we know where we are from time to depth, and also the seismic amplitude data. It does a spectral decomposition, does a multiple multi-attribute analysis to compare the attributes to the log curve, and comes up with the best fit, best statistical fit. Then it takes that regression and inverts the data into a pseudo V-shale volume that we're looking at right here. This is the same line of section as we're looking at in the amplitude volume. Notice where we have the cool colors is indicating a thick buildup of the stand that corresponds very well to my V-shale curves. And you notice over here on the right my thin V-shale curve is also corresponding to the thin inversion of the V-shale attribute. Now I could take my geophysical interpretation, my depth converted surface, my velocity model, and my inversion volume back into the geomodeling environment within smart section. I'll turn back on the color on the top of the detrital. And instead of just using the well control for the detrital, I'm going to combine it with the isomap control of our depth converted seismic. And notice it does indicate a westward closure west of the current production. In addition, I can take a depth converted seismic of the inversion volume and display that along the line of section that we were looking at previously to see below the detrit lung conformity it looks like I have a good correspondence of thick sand with the V-shale curves indicated by the log curves. So let's see if we have good reservoir sand underneath our structure. So I'm going to make a new well-to-well -well cross section through the wells along the crest of the feature.
and as I cursor track from the wells that are producing on the crest of the feature to the west, I see by the inversion data that I have good sand beneath that unconformity. So it looks like we may have at least two more low-risk development locations to the west. Now looking at this in our new Pro 3D package, I can see the top of the tridle indicated by this surface. I also have the ability to put the depth converted inversion volumes behind us and turn on and off the top of the tridle and you can see the green, the cooler colors are indicating good reservoir quality. Now I can see beneath that unconformity I've got a number of wells. There's a dry hole drilled right in here to this area that has little or no sand in that area and that area. So there's a good correspondence between producing wells and the inversion volume indicating thick sand. LMKR Geographics 2014 brings you an improved geological and geophysical interpretation integrated in a robust 3D geo model. LMKR enhances the geographics workflow experience by improved integration between the disciplines of geology, petrophysics, geophysics, and geomodeling. New geophysical attribute modeling further advances your understanding of the Earth model as visualized within our new 3D visualization environment. All this capability enables the creation of a robust and sophisticated earth model to help target the optimal zone to lower drilling risk and improve your return on investment.